This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In this chapter, we're going to look at a very important aspect of corporation tax, and that's groups. It's become more important because of the change of the rules with the Finance Act this year. And now we have a two-tier tax system. So it is important that all the groups um, information, the rules that you're fully aware of them, because it may come up in the exam. So as with all things tax, what do we start with? We start with a rule. So a group exists for tax purposes where one company is a subsidiary of another and there are various rules and reliefs for being a member of a group. These are the definitions. So definition of a 75% group one company must be the 75% subsidiary of another and both are 75 subsidiaries of a third. Okay, so if we have holding number one and a subsidiary number one and subsidiary number two, direct 75% and indirect must also be 75%. Direct and indirect. Now, the holding must have 75% share, 75% of the assets on winding up, and 75% of profit, um, profit distribution. Now, this is the main bit that you've ne I've never seen that asked. You just need to know the direct and indirect. So, group relief is available in respect of three things. One, a current year trade loss to another current year trade loss for in the, another company within the group, any excessive QCDs that are not being used and excessive property business losses. Such losses are only excess if they exceed the total profits of the company concerned before any losses are applied. Any unused trading losses or property losses brought forward by a company may also now be surrendered by group relief, but only to the extent that the loss-making company is unable to set off the loss against its own total profits. So this holding, this is an effective interest. So this that I've explained, this I've drawn out here, is explained in more detail. The holding company must have an effective or indirect holding or interest in the subsidiary of at least 75%. So we have an example here. If a parent company owns 90% of a subsidiary, which in turn owns 90% of subsidiary 2, like we had above, uh, then all three, three companies are in a group because 90 times 90 is 81% which is obviously more than 75%. And then you have another example here. If this was 80%, sorry, this one was 80%, then obviously that wouldn't be the case because 90% of 80% is only 72%. Now, the other rule to remember, so it's got to be 75% direct and indirect you can be in more than one group and I'll show you on this example what I mean here. So example number one, PLC, Z PLC is a holding company for a group and this is the structure. So Z owns A, A owns B, B owns C and Z is the one with the loss. Okay, so that to there, obviously 100%. That to there, we're still on 80%, are we not? But, so Z and A and B can all be in one group together. Now, when we get down further, we can't because 80% times 80% is only 64%. So Z's effective interest in C is only 64%. 
So C cannot be in the same group as Z and A and B. However, I'm going to change my pen to a different colour so you can see this. B and C are in a group. They are in a group because B owns more than 75% uh, of C. Now B is now in two groups. That means that B can benefit from being in group number one and can benefit from being in group number two. What it couldn't do is take a loss from Z and then pass it on to C. Doesn't. Everything has to stay within the group. It's just got two options that it can um, benefit from. Now, if it asks you to state, then it's asking for words. So please write it out in full um, and explain in um, a lot of detail. Um, be very specific. So surrendering company is ZPLC. This is the surrendering company because that's where the loss is. And they are surrendering that loss. The receiving companies are either A or B. So what is the rule? Apply the rule and be very, very specific with your answers. So how does group relief work? So trade losses may be surrendered to other companies in a group, which may, they may then relieve that loss against their total taxable profits or TTP. A mem any member company may surrender its loss to other members of the group. So a holding company can surrender its loss to a subsidiary, as we saw in example number one. A subsidiary may surrender its loss up to the holding company and the subsidiary may surrender its loss to another surrendering company so it's very very flexible uh, the surrendering company is the company that's surrendering its loss and the claimant one so those are the ones that we looked at there surrendering company in example number one was a z and the claimant companies was either a or b Let's learn more about the surrendering company. So the recent surrendering company may surrender as much of its loss as it wants to. And it's not necessary to relieve the loss against its own income and gains first. Now that's important specifically if you've got a situation where the surrendering company has other income which might be covered by QCDs or might be in the 19% limit. Whereas it's going to send its loss to a company that's either 25% or in the margin. The loss which may be surrendered are any amount of the current period trade loss, QCDs, as we've seen before, property losses, as we've seen before, and trade and profit losses brought forward only to the extent that they cannot be set off against the surrendering company's own total profits. Just a little bit of a restriction there. So those rules we've looked at previously. The claimant company is the one who is receiving that information. So we're going to look at example number two here. out of the way. Battery Limited owns 100% of Clock Limited. During the six month period ended the 30th of March, Clock had trading income of £50,000 and property income of £30,000. During the year ended 31st of December 24, Battery had a trading loss of £100,000. What is the maximum loss that clock can claim from battery 
for the period ended the 31st of March 2024. Now there's quite a lot of work in this that we need to be aware of. So I'm going to take it one step at a time. So battery owns 100% of clock. So they are a group. And it's important if you have a situation with a question like this, that you say that. That's, I know it's stating the obvious, but you get half a mark for stating the obvious, that they are a group because it's more than 75%. So they're going to surrender and they're going to claim. But we have a problem. Did you notice the year ends? Look at it again. One has a year end of March and one has a year end of December. The technical term for this is non-coterminous year ends. When you have non-coterminous year ends, non-coterminous year ends, okay, we need to deal with this um, more specifically. So there is a rule, and it is the lower of the profit or the loss. So I'm going to draw it out because it's easier if I draw it out. So clock. First of. October 23 to the 31st of March 24 it made a profit of 80,000 now battery this is the company that made a loss now, its year end, its year starts here, 1st of the 1st, 24, and that goes through to 31st of December, 24, and they made a loss of 100,000. This portion in the middle here, this three months, piece here is the coterminous bits okay the bit that overlaps so the overlap of the loss and the overlap of the profit in order to be able to work out this lower of so it's the lower of the claimant company which is the profit so that's 80,000 pounds times three sixths because it's a six month period which is 40,000 and the loss which is a hundred thousand times three twelfths which is 25,000 so it's the lowest amount and that's this one so in clocks pro forma We'll have the profits, which you would have to write out in full. Less group relief. Of, what did we say it was? 25,000. Oops. Which gives us a TTP of 55. 